Who here is a Trekkie? <laughs> Me too. Growing up, I binged on Star Trek reruns. I loved the artificial intelligence, the holodeck, the tricorder, the all-knowing computer. I loved the, data, the android data. The crew who boldly went where no one had gone before, or maybe naively went. Do you remember the Borg? traversing across galaxies, absorbing entire civilizations into their collective, and turning each individual into a cyborg drone. Somehow, the crew, using their human intelligence and working together, survived each episode, aside from a few poor security officers, unfortunately. <laughs> The Borg worried me in terms of AI and what it could mean in the wrong hands. But it seemed so far in the future. So I decided to pursue my passion, and I headed to California, where it was all happening. And for the next 20, 20 years, I worked on the new frontier of high tech in San Diego. And during that time, Almost all the technology that we saw in Star Trek actually became a reality. Last year, a company called Qualcomm in San Diego actually awarded the very first Tricorder X Prize. And the device called Dexter actually diagnoses 34 health conditions. The first holodeck in the world was actually created in Vancouver. A couple of years ago, a company called H Plus Technologies created it at the Vancouver Ronald McDonald House. How about the computer, the all-knowing computer? Well, here we are. We have Apple Siri. We have Google Assistant. We have Amazon Exa, uh, Echo and Alexa. Androids. We have robots building our cars. They're mowing our lawns. This one speaks regularly at conferences like this. She's been on the Jimmy Fallon show, and ironically, just this year, she became a full citizen of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> but, unfortunately, the dark side of AI has emerged. Self-driving cars are threatening to take away the jobs of truck drivers and cab drivers. Intelligent systems are answering the phone. They're sensing your mood. They're picking stocks. They're booking travel. Yesterday, I read an article about a new robot that can install drywall. <laughs> In April of this year, 50 of the world's leading artificial intelligence re researchers boycotted a South Korean university because they were worried that they were developing an autonomous killer robot. Stephen Hawking, before we tragically lost him this year, issued many warnings about AI. In an article in um, Wired magazine this year, he said, humans have created computer viruses, and that means they can create artificial intelligence that can replicate itself, and that will be a threat to humanity. So is resistance futile, like the Borg said it was? Or can we co-opt AI to be the salvation of mankind? Can AI be for good? Well, I recently returned to Canada, and I've been really excited about the work that researchers, industry, and public agencies are doing together here in the Okanagan to extend the capabilities of mankind rather than to replace us. I'd like to tell you a few stories. The first one is about protecting children from child sexual predators. Every year, the RCMP pours over thousands of photos trying to track down sexual predators and rescue the children. 
Time is of the essence in each case. But the numbers of photos that are being posted are going up exponentially each year. The cases, the number of actual cases are doubling. At the same time, the officers that do this troubling work are developing post-traumatic stress disorder, the same condition that soldiers develop on the battlefield. So a Kelowna company called Two Hat Security has partnered with the RCMP and the University of British Columbia, Okanagan campus, UBCO, to create an artificial neural network that sifts through tens of thousands of photos and identifies sexual abuse material. The system is already 90% accurate, and the team is working to make that number even higher. The next innovation I'd like to talk about relates to, I would call it a robot nose. So, as you know, when you have diabetes, you have to prick your finger multiple times a day in order to test your blood glucose. What if a tiny, inexpensive sensor could test all the complex gases in your breath and do the same thing? What if a sensor could continuously monitor oil pipelines and sewer lines and prevent spills? What if you could test your breath for cannabis and know whether it was safe to drive or not? UBCO engineering professor Mina Hurfer and postdoc Mohamed Praknad have developed just such a system. It's called a microfluidic-based gas sensor, gas analyzer. And this technology is tiny, size of two fingers. It's light, it's cheap to produce, tests in seconds. You can attach it via Bluetooth to a cell phone, so you can collect and analyze the data. Even better, when you connect it to machine learning, artificial intelligence machine learning, it can not only sense the different gases, but it can tell you the concentrations in each one. Mina has already got commercialization agreements with Cannabix Technologies for law enforcement, Heatex Solutions for oil and gas pipelines, Metro Vancouver for sewers, and she's also doing a project with Fortis BC. I'd like to tell you a little bit about another type of artificial intelligence now. It's called reinforced learning. The original robots were programmed to do one thing over and over. Today, you can provide a system with a starting point, with parameters, and then you reward it as it learns by trial and error, just like a child would, but far faster. A reinforced learning system has been created at UBCO, and it's been created by engineering researchers Humayun Najran and Abbas Malani. They're working with the German Aerospace Research Center, DLR. The system is designed to eliminate wrinkles in the manufacture of airplanes using composite materials. Wrinkles in composites can create airplane failure. The system is incredible. It has 127 sensors that carefully drape a composite mesh onto a curved surface. Think a bulkhead of an airplane. Each sensor acts independently because each composite sheet is different. And they sense the density of the weave, the density of the metal, and the differences in each sheet. The last innovation I'd like to share relates to cancer detection. Rasika Rajapachki is passionate about early detection and diagnosis of breast, lymph node, and lung cancers. He is a senior medical physicist at the BC Cancer Center. He's a professor of surgery at UBC and an adjunct computer science professor at UBCO. One of the projects he's working on involves false positives in breast cancer. 
His research shows that when women receive a false positive diagnosis, some go on to actually develop cancer. So he's developed a machine learning system that will detect the very tiny, subtle changes, in the biological changes in the tissue, so that cancer specialists can prescribe preventative drugs and ensure that the individual does not develop cancer in the future. All of these individuals are using real human intelligence to use AI to extend our human capabilities, to save lives, and not to obsolesce us. Let's, as a community, work together to solve our most complex problems using AI. Access to clean water, access to education, healthcare, better education in healthcare. Solve fire, flooding, homelessness, chronic disease, mental health. Together, let's boldly go where no one has gone before. Let's use AI for good. Thank you.